Yeah, well, the question is what what multiple you should what what multiple should you pay for a business that's earning a hundred million dollars a year, call it pre-tax, whose earnings are going to go down five percent a year compared to what you should pay for a business with a that's earning a hundred million dollars a year that's earning whose earnings are going to go up five percent a year, and I would say that I'm not saying that those are percentages I predict on newspaper companies, but certainly newspaper companies face the prospect of their newspaper earnings eroding. And we've seen some of it already. We see every trend pointing in that direction. We own a, a newspaper ourselves. And, and uh, you know, I do not think the circulation of our paper will be larger in five years, and I don't think the advertising pages will be greater. And uh, I think that's true even of newspapers that operate in in more prosperous, or actually more growing, I should say, uh, areas of the country than, than than we do. So, but I don't think I don't think most owners of papers still have quite gotten to the point where they start projecting out declining earnings. Uh, certainly, multiples on newspaper stocks. Uh, are unattractively high if you would see some decline like five or six percent a year in earnings occurring for this point. They just they're not cheap enough to compensate for that sort of erosion in earning power. And then you face the added risk that they may have a sort of a perception lag and that they may continue to use some of that money to to buy other newspapers at prices which again don't make much sense. It's it's pretty hard in a declining business to buy things cheap enough uh, to compensate for the decline. Uh, people in the business always tend to think that they're seeing the first robin, you know, or something, and, and that it's going to get better. And I would say the newspaper business, the decline, is, if anything, has is, is accelerated somewhat. I, uh, you know, when they take when they take people out to the cemetery, they're taking newspaper readers, and when people graduate from school, they're not gaining newspaper readers, and, and that may not uh, change things overnight, but it, it goes in the wrong direction. And the less the readers, the less the readership, the less compelling argument to have to advertisers. So that virtuous circle uh, where everybody read a paper because every ad was in it and every ad was in it because every everybody read a paper that virtuous cycle is going in the other direction now and I don't uh, I don't think present prices for papers compensate for that and you you are now hearing from a couple of guys that just love newspapers we think newspapers are indispensable right. but we don't have a lot of we have less company in that view than before we we love I read five newspapers every day Charlie probably does about the same and and Four. yeah well he's it shows too. The uh, <laughs> the uh, you know we 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 couldn't live without them, but a lot of people can, and more people can every day. And said, um, we love the idea of buying newspapers. We traveled to Cincinnati and sat in cheap hotels, and <laughs> all kinds of things to buy newspapers, but. And we thought, incidentally, we, we, we loved them as products, and we, and we thought they were the greatest of businesses, the ultimate bulletproof franchise. But it became apparent we were wrong. You know, we still love them as, news, as, as products, but we were wrong about the bulletproof franchise. And, and you know, when we, we got to believe our eyes in terms of what we're seeing in, in, in that world. Charlie? Yeah. I have an even greater sin to admit to. I once thought General Motors was a bulletproof franchise. And, but we have a wonderful way of coping with a lot of these things. We have this too hard pile. I don't know if Warren is buying General Motors or, or, uh, or not, but I have a good guess. And, and, and it's, it's just too hard. If something is too hard to to do, we look for something that isn't too hard to do. What could be more obvious than that? It may mean that we don't do very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won't get into some specifics. 
the news, it's, it's, I don't think anybody has watched the newspaper business much more carefully than Charlie and I have for really 50 years. We used to, we, we always talked about every paper in the country and, and the potential for buying it and all of that sort of thing. And it was a, it was easily understood. I mean, it was, it was about as easy an economic, a business economics problem as you could imagine. And we slowly woke up the, the change on it. Actually, I wrote in the 1991 annual report, uh, the newspaper, the very, the preprints of the world, you know, started turning the newspaper into a wrapper. It was contained a whole bunch of things that could have been contained in some other package. Now, your newspaper was, wasn't reproducible in some other package, but this, this thing was carrying around a bunch of preprints. Now, the question is, is there a bunch, is there, are there easier ways to carry around those preprints? But there was nothing magical about the paper except it got inside the house and, and brought the preprints inside the house. And as the newspaper lost penetration, it became a somewhat less efficient way of getting things into the house, and other, other ways became more efficient at getting things into the house. And so there's these things, it's, it's not a hard business to understand. And it has been interesting to me to watch both owners, direct owners and investors in the business sort of resist seeing what's right in front of them, you know. It, it, uh, it just, it, it went so long the other way that you couldn't make a mistake buying a Monopoly newspaper. Nobody ever made a mistake buying one, you know, up until what, 1975 or 80 or something like that. Yeah. If the technology had not changed, they'd still be impregnable franchises. But the technology did change. Fortunately, carbide cutting tools appear to have no good substitute. It's a lot better business over time, if you have the right management. It, take, it takes very good management. The nice thing about the newspaper business 30 or 40 years ago, it took no management at all. I mean, if, if, if you had an idiot new nephew, you know, you uh, be a perfect, or a network television station, I mean, they, they were going to make money no matter what happened. They are going to make more money if they were under good management. I mean, if Tom Murphy was running your television stations, you were going to do much better than if you had your nephew doing it but the nephew would have done all right. <laughs> Number seven. 